Hi y'all today, let's make a dish that's on every Cajun and Creole holiday dinner table, melaton seafood dressing. So let's get started on this good loving from the oven holiday classic. Let's start by making breadcrumbs. In a small bowl, make the seasoned blend by combining some iodized salt, ground black pepper, oregano leaves, dried basil, dried thyme, granulated garlic, onion powder, smoked paprika. Never fear, the grocery list measurements and instructions are all listed in the description box if you don't have all of these spices on hand it's okay to use your favorite commercial creole or cajun spice blend once the spices are mixed set the blend aside next take eight to ten ounces of whatever day old bread you have on hand and cut into one half inch croutons if i'm using sliced bread like i am today i'll stack three to four slices at a time and cut four equal strips across the horizontal grain then i'll turn the bread and cut three even strips down the vertical grain if i'm using a baguette i'll cut the baguette in half long ways first and then cut the baguette crosswise into half inch cubes. If you're using fresh bread, let it sit out overnight. Stale bread cuts a lot easier than fresh bread. Using a serrated bread knife of a straight edge butcher knife will also make cutting easier. Once you get your croutons cut and see they come out pretty evenly shaped using that cutting technique. Transfer the bread cubes to a mixing bowl sprinkle two tablespoons of extra light olive oil and the Creogen season blend over the bread cubes. Now make sure to use extra light olive oil so the taste of the oil doesn't overpower the taste of the spice blend. In my opinion, the taste of regular extra virgin olive oil is a bit too heavy for making croutons or breadcrumbs. If you don't have extra light olive oil, use a neutral vegetable oil instead. Then use a spatula, wooden spoon, or comparable utensil to toss the cubes until they are well coated with the seasoning. Spread the croutons out in a single layer on a parchment lined baking sheet. Bake in a preheated oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes. Halfway through the toasting process, flip the croutons. Now remember, you want the croutons toasted a nice deep brown on both sides. See how one side is nice and toasted, but the other side is not? That's what you don't want. You want both sides to be nice and brown, so make sure to flip halfway through the toasting process. Once they're cooled, use a mini food processor to pulverize. If you don't have a food processor, put the croutons in a Ziploc bag and use a rolling pin or meat tenderizer to crush them. Now these are meliton. During the holiday, meliton infused dressing and stuffed meliton are definitely part of a New Orleans holiday dinner. This bottom seam you want to use as your cutting guide. That way the knife goes through the middle and slices that seed perfectly in half. After rinsing, use a large sharp kitchen knife to cut the fruit in half. Don't try to remove that middle seed while the meliton is raw. Note that if you use that bottom seam as your guide, that seed will get split right down the middle every time, and it'll make it easier to remove when it's time to remove. Now, when you buy melaton, or what some people call chayote, pick out those that don't have the little sprouts poking from the skin. The sprouts indicate that they have been in the store a little while. This is not such a big issue if you're making dressing but if you were stuffing the melaton, you would want to make sure the skin was as pretty as possible. Look them over for bruising. They should be firm, ranging in color from light green to sour apple green. Just inspect them like you would any fruit or vegetable and pick the best ones. Place the halved melaton in a pot that will hold enough water to cover them by a couple of inches. Add a half teaspoon of salt to the water and cover your pot with a vented lid or manually vent the lid and bring to a boil over medium high heat for 30 to 40 minutes until tender. Use the tip of a knife to test for tenderness. When they've cooked to the right tenderness, drain the water and allow them to cool enough to handle. Use a spoon to scoop out and discard the seed. Use the side of the spoon to carve out the seed at the outer perimeter. 
and once the seed is removed and discarded, we'll start scraping the melatonin meat out of the shell and into the bowl. Now melatonin, like all squash, are packed with water. This is going to help keep your dressing moist. So don't be concerned with the water. The story of melaton or merleton or merleton, depending on who's pronouncing, is that it originated in Mexico and South America. But like a lot of foods in Louisiana, melaton was introduced to us by the Spanish, who called melaton chayote. I can believe that, but I also hear some Native American in the word chayote. Regardless, in Creole French, chayote is translated melaton. I often get asked about the taste of melaton. It really doesn't have a taste when it's boiled. It mimics the taste of the ingredients around it. But if I was pressed, I'd say it kind of sort of tastes a little like a very mild zucchini when it's roasted. If melaton are unavailable in your area, zucchini is a good substitute. Once the meat is separated from the skin, use a fork or pastry cutter or potato masher to break up your melaton. You're not trying to turn the meat into mush, but you do want to break it down enough that you don't have large chunks in your dress. Then set it aside and let's start cooking. In a 12 inch saute pan over medium high heat, melt two tablespoons of salted butter. Okay, to the melted butter, let's add one cup of chopped yellow onion, a cup of chopped celery, a half cup of green bell pepper that's been chopped, teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of ground black pepper, teaspoon of Cajun seasoning, quarter teaspoon of granulated onion, and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. Let's mix the seasonings into the veggies and saute for about five to seven minutes until the onions become soft and transparent. You may also hear Creoles and Cajuns and other people from the South talk about stuffed melaton for the holidays. This is just another way to prepare the melaton. The traditional filling for stuffed melaton is a little bit different. That stuffing has sausage and ham and shrimp. Now, once the onions are softened and become translucent, you want to add two teaspoons of minced garlic to the veggies. You want to saute your garlic until aromatic, and this is going to take about a minute. Now it's time to mix in the mashed melaton. So I went back and used a pastry cutter to pulverize the melaton a bit more, but you can see how this has some texture, but it's not overly big chunks. That's how you want the melaton to look because it's going to break down some more in the oven. Don't mind that little bit of water because the water is going to help keep your dressing moist. But let me say this, if you prep your melaton and refrigerate it the night before, there may be up to a cup of water collected in the bowl. You'll need to drain that water before adding the melaton to the veggies. There should be no more than a couple tablespoons of free water added. Seafood dressing is not supposed to be dry. It's not a cornbread dressing, so the bread is not the star of this show. The melaton is used as sort of a filler. It provides structure to your dressing and helps to marry all of the ingredients together. So once you get your melaton and your veggies mixed in, you want to saute that for about three to five additional minutes until the flavors come together. Adjust your seasonings and turn off the heat. The rest of the cooking will occur in the oven. Mix in a pound to a pound and a half of seasoned peeled devein and chopped shrimp. Use about a teaspoon of your favorite Cajun blend to season the shrimp. I typically prep the shrimp the night before, cover with plastic wrap or an elastic food cover, and refrigerate until I'm ready for them. Make sure your shrimp are well incorporated into your veggies before adding the next ingredient. Mix in a pound of white crab meat. This is not lump crab meat. It has a more flaky texture and is a little bit less expensive than lump, but still has that mild lump flavor. White crab meat is sold like the claw meat is sold in eight or 16 ounce containers. You can use claw meat as well, but if you do, I would suggest cutting back to about half a pound because claw has a stronger flavor and you don't want to overpower your shrimp. You want to taste the shrimp and the crab. Gently incorporate the crab before moving on to the next ingredient. Now let's add the breadcrumbs. 
I start with about one and a half cups and adjust from there. Now what you're looking for is a moist but not wet consistency. Remember the melaton is going to break down some more in the oven and the shrimp are also going to let off some moisture. So you need enough breadcrumbs to balance the moisture. But you shouldn't have to add more than two cups of breadcrumbs to the seafood dressing. Now once you have your seafood combined, then you want to stir in one large egg that's been slightly beaten. Now look how pretty that is. You have your shrimp, your crab, your melaton, your breadcrumbs, and the residual heat is already starting to cook your seafood. So now what you need to do is prepare your casserole dish. Spray your casserole dish with a little bit of cooking oil and then use a pastry brush to distribute the oil around the sides. Once you get this done, then go ahead and transfer your seafood dressing into your casserole dish. Don't pack your dressing too tightly. Just snuggle it into the dish. Bake in a preheated 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for an hour to an hour and 15 minutes uncovered until set browned and bubbly. Now look at that. See, you didn't have to sprinkle breadcrumbs on top to get that beautiful crusty rim and top that we love to see in a dressing. You can see the pink shrimp, you can see the crab. The melaton has essentially disappeared. Not only is it pretty to look at, it's pretty to eat too, I guarantee. And it's ready to be served. And there you have it, straight from the bayou. Seafood dressing with shrimp, crab, melaton, and Creogen breadcrumbs. And remember, when you mix a little bit of Creole with a little bit of Cajun, that's some good loving from the oven, good eating. And if you like this video and want to see more Creole and Cajun inspired yummies, don't forget to subscribe and like. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. Thanks for stopping by. Happy, happy holidays and see y'all next time.